Hello everyone, welcome back to my video series on making a web server in Python. Uh, this episode is going to be a lot more interesting. We're going to make something that's actually kind of useful and, and uh, fun. Uh, what I'm going to do is create a web page which will allow me to type in Python commands and have them execute on whatever PC uh, this web server is running on. Uh, so that's kind of cool, let's get started. The first thing we need to do is we don't want to keep typing HTML directly in our Python script here. That would be tedious and messy and uh, generally is not done. So what we're going to do instead is use Flask's template system. Uh, it's, it has Jinja2, I think that's how you pronounce it, templates built in. So the way you tell um, Flask to use a template is you call render template and you give it the template name. Now I went ahead and created a very basic template. Let me show you my file structure here. Here's the file I'm editing. I dropped a folder down called templates. This is the default location that Flask looks for these templates. And I just call it index.html. And if I open that file up, you see it's just a very basic uh, HTML uh, document. I have a form on it which does a post and it has a text area, a uh, text box I guess, with the name expression. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that does. If I refresh here, I get a little box with a little button that says execute and I could potentially type some Python in here. And when I click execute, I want that to execute. But, oh, we get a method not allowed. Uh, the method post is not allowed for the requested URL. Okay, well, let's fix that. If I go back to my Python script, we can see here we've got a get method, but no post method. So we can remedy that pretty easily. We'll just return works for now so that we know it's working. Uh, one additional step you have to do is let the view know that you're handling additional uh, HTTP verbs. So we're going to do that by making a little list here and putting get and post inside of that. So now if we go back to our browser and refresh and submit the same information, we can say, or we can see it's now working. So, uh, next step in this process is we need to get it to actually um, execute and display our code. Now, I don't want a separate display window, so I just want it to, or a separate page, I should say. I just want it to display right down here. So, let's go back to our HTML document. Um, now, the best way, or I guess one way to do this, is to use flashing. Flashing is a way to send messages to a specific user uh, via their session. Um, and the way Flask handles this is from your web server you uh, flash a message and it gets stored in a session object which then the next time that a template is rendered if it contains certain code in it it will display those messages. So we need to go ahead and write that code in here. Um, and this uh, this is actually the Jinja2 syntax. Uh, you can definitely use other um, um, template engines, but I'll be using the built-in Jinja templates just out of um, ease. So here, um, this looks a lot like Python, and I think it probably is based on Python, but it's a little bit different as you will be able to tell in a minute. This code basically is is getting the flash messages obviously, um, and then it's it's doing some conditionals where we can say if there are messages to be flashed we can put some data out there. So, uh, so obviously if there's a flashed uh, result we want to put it here, but if there isn't, we want to hide this. So that's why this this section is under this if. And then we're going to need a loop. So 
So it's going to, uh, actually I want this right here. It's going to loop through all of the messages and it's going to display the message. And I'm going to put this over here, seen as how I put the pre tag there. This will prevent it from having any um, spaces you know, in front of the first item. And then we'll actually need to end the for loop. And then we want to end the pre tag. Then we want to end the if. And then we want to end the with. So as you can see, it's different than Python because seeing how spacing is not important in HTML, um, we need these extra tags such as end with and end if to let it know that this section of code is has ended, obviously. Okay, so now that we have that, let's go back to our Python code. And we need to um, execute whatever message is being sent to us via the form. Now, in order to grab that form data, we have to access uh, Flask's request object. And there's a dictionary called form, which we can then um, pull out the key expression. Expression comes from the HTML name of the field that you want to get. So this is the, the expression that the user typed in. Let's go ahead and verify that that works by returning it as a string. That way we can just view it on the page to see if we're on the right track here. So if I type something in here, we can see we got something back. So let's go ahead and store off. Uh, well, what we want to do here is execute this uh, as Python code. So we'll just call it eval on this. And we'll store the results in a variable. And now I want to flash this result. So I'm going to do yeah, flask.flash and give it the result. And then I'm going to go ahead and just return self.get. And what that will do is just uh, go up here and render this template again and send it back. That'll just kind of show you um, it's the same exact line of code, but uh, the results are different since we're flashing. So let's go ahead and give that a shot. If I bring up my page again, and I will do that. Oh, one last step. I want to I want to specifically um, do some OS things. So I'm going to import OS at the top here because if you can't import things when you do in the val, so I'm just going to do that. And now I'm going to attempt to do an os.lister on wherever I am. Boo. Oh, yes. One last thing. So, uh, so if you haven't already seen it, this is the uh, error screen. Um, there's this thing called a secret key, which is uh, very important when doing anything with the session. So, um, since we're creating a special session that we can flash to, we need to have some kind of secret key to um, kind of encode uh, the data between the web server and uh, the user's browser. So uh, typically you want to make this something secure, something uh, random, time-based or something. We're just going to do bacon here, and let me just say, don't do this. And uh, as you can see uh, by the name, this should be kept secret. And if obviously an attacker gets a hold of this, they'll be able to decode your session and do all sorts of bad things. So let's uh, give that one more shot. OS.lister. All right, excellent. So as you can see, it returned demo.py and templates. We can verify that is indeed my directory structure here. So there we go. With uh, just a bit of Python and a little bit of HTML and Jinja templates, we can execute commands remotely on uh, any server. Um, 
There's something I didn't mention here, and a lot of people who may already know Python are probably screaming at their screens by now. Um, this is a very unsafe thing to do. If you expose this to the internet and somebody figures out you can type in random commands like this, they could potentially do a lot of damage to your uh, web server and PC and you know, reputation and everything. So uh, one quick and easy example, they already know what's in your file you know, directory here. They already know that there's a Python file here, so they can go ahead and just uh, open that. and then read that to the screen so bam they have your entire web server code they have your secret key that you insecurely just used bacon for some reason so now they can decode session information and and steal credit card information if you're doing any processing credit cards or something like that uh... and then of, of course there's always uh... the people who just want to watch the world burn so they could uh... go into your template file for writing and then write something hast by Jake. Oops. Templates. And now your template's hosed, so I hope you're backing it up somewhere. Alright, so that's it. If you guys like this video, uh, please let me know. Give me some comments and feedback. Maybe something that you want to see done next. Uh, yep, that's it.